Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb uh, SEO Questions, episode 304. Each week yeah, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google Plus for the next 10 months and uh, also the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasam. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's also a Google top contributor or a Google product expert on the uh, AdSense community. David Rosam um, is uh, uh, a copywriter of 30 odd years experience, uh, an SEO copywriter for 12. He's a, an internet publisher based uh, on the southern side uh, of uh, the UK. Um, Masataki is located in Wimbledon. Micah Fisher Kirshner is a regular on the public speaking circuit. He's head of SEO for Turn River Capital uh, um, in the USA. Um, Masataki is located just uh, a little bit higher than Silicon Valley on the west coast of the USA. And Rob Mars has joined us tonight. Rob uh, is an AdWords aficionado based in the Netherlands. Uh, he uh, uh, is a Google top contributor on the uh, AdWords and oh, I always get this wrong, Rob. Um, AdWords and search, I think, anyway. And Tim Kapper is um, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's based uh, in um, Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, Tim is a Google product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. Um, you can find Tim at uh, onlineownership.com. Um, Rob Mars at, oh, I can't remember now, Rob, sorry, mate. Mike Fisher Kirshner, David, David Rosam at um, writing for SEO.org and Masataki Wasa at wasaweb.net. Okay, let's um, just shift. No, um, what am I doing wrong? Something. There we are. All right. Um, we right there our first question tonight uh, is um, titled uh, the keyword uh, is ranking on the wrong page it's from helen anderson um helen said uh, i am hello i'm going to develop a new site for a customer who has a bad and slow site the site is ranking top um one on two keywords um, and the bad part is that it is ranking on the wrong page when i do the new site uh, can i 301 redirect to the right page of the site of course uh, with yoast and uh, uh, other seo uh, on page uh, optimization uh, um, Yeah, okay, how about it, guys? Sorry about that. Sorry for the bad read. Yeah, so you can do a 3 1 redirect um, from the page that you want to the, or page that you don't want ranking to the one you want ranking. Um, <clears throat> it may be best, as kind of Lyndon is noting, just to double check why the page is there. Um, Google makes mistakes sometimes, so it's, yeah, understandable in terms of wanting to fix it, but um, it may make sense to first double check uh, if the intent of the whole search result makes sense, given that that would be the page that shows up. Um, there's always a possibility that if you do try to change out the page, that um, you may lose out completely if you're trying to put in a different page instead. So you may you may just want to double check. Um, what that result looks like and how that is before you make the shift over. But if it's sometimes like if it's like, as an example, the contact us page is ranking above the home page for just uh, the main, like a, a regular kind of 
brand term uh, that isn't related to contact, then it's like, all right, well, something's off here. Um, so so there, there's definitely some appropriateness for that, but just, again, double check before you go and do that. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? Yeah, she explains the situation in her response, doesn't she? Um, saying that essentially there's it's the time, um, it's essentially office, I think, um, rent on office per hour kind of thing. Um, they had one location, they had a paid web page for that for eight years. They have another location now so they have two locations instead of one um and so instead of having just one page for the first location which is in the south of the city they now have uh, i think a home page and then two pages one for south and one for north um but the if you let's say search for um office hotel in stockholm then the South, the southern one comes up all the time ahead of the home page. That may be due to the fact that that you might be looking at this um, from the southern part of the city. It might be a localization thing, possibly, perhaps unlikely. Maybe it's likely that because the southern location has been around for such a long time that it has accrued so much more um references to it and therefore is associated as the most likely entity that people are looking for thank you Mr. I, sorry go ahead david i think i might be inclined to um to develop the new site um see what happens with the the ranking of the pages um if the site is so bad and slow right now um it might just sort itself out um so i think i unless there's a, a screaming hurry and you can't get the the clients to uh to calm down over this um i i think i would uh, redevelop it leave the leave the content that's ranking this way for the moment and see what see what happens it could be that uh um that google will will read it properly and make uh and make judgment upon it properly um if if the site's better than uh, it was before technically yep thank you david all right anybody else before we move on All right, our, our next uh, question uh, is from Kajal Max Westphaling. Um, it's titled Moving a Site to a New Domain Without Hampering SEO. Um, he said, I'm moving a site to a new domain completely. Um, how should I least impact SEO for the site without harming the site's last couple of years worth of SEO? Uh, and gaining rankings is the question. Uh, yeah. I think it needs to be pretty. Um, well, it's like like Michael said. So, it's, I mean, what's the size of this? But in essence, uh, what you want to be doing is take every page from the old site, you know, chuck it into a spreadsheet, chuck all your new pages from the new site, you know, your dev site, pop that in there. Obviously, ideally, before it goes live, you want to manage this on the day that you switch over properly. And then you, what you what you want to be doing is looking at what, you know, you know, mapping out, um, you know, uh, your redirects, because you want you know um you want this page that's there it's on the new one you might have slightly changed the url or whatever but this page belongs goes to this page this page goes to this page this page goes to this page map the whole thing out um uh so you probably have you know all your all your 301 redirects in place so you you, you know what you're doing um um 
but that's the key you know you really need to map it out and that's where a lot of people go wrong you know they use um uh, uh, they use wildcard redirects and crap like that but I, I prefer to map it properly from 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 day one so you know what's going where um and that way you 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 typically retain um you know the positions assuming that the page that you're redirecting to had the same content on uh or at least similar content um you know you can have changed it up you could have but at least you know then you're going to uh potentially keep the same um you know the same uh rankings thank you tim now, anybody else just before we move on i just want to point out people like michael martinez uh, who answered uh, this question and uh, uh, lyndon nah who uh, answered the previous one uh, these guys uh, front up uh, every day on our um, SEO questions community on Google Plus and uh, the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. Um, and uh, we are very grateful for their input. All right, uh, let's um, move on to the next. If I can find a mouse. No, didn't want to do that. All right, so this one from Jason uh, Hyung Chul Kang. Is it okay to use generic stock photos for a blog? I was wondering if there were, if there would be any negative repercussions for using uh, um, stock photo images um, and free images available on the web. Please let me know your thoughts. Uh, if they're for a blog page, look, um, yeah, typically won't be an issue. But there's a couple of things that you want to be looking at. Uh, obviously, your file, when you save that image, your file name uh, should should be, um, you know, related to to your blog that you're writing about, and your 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 description, your alt image description should, you know, obviously describe. Uh, the image itself. Um, uh, having said that, you know, I don't think I don't think Google is, you know, going to going to going to penalise an article where you <laughs> you're writing about something and then you go uh, and like in your article you go, um, you know, like you reveal something like oh shock horror kind of thing, and then you. You, you you put that picture of Batman slapping Robin. Do you know what I mean? It you're not going to be penalised because you've used a stock image to to you, you know uh, enhance the article. Um, if these were product pages, there there'd be another story, you know, because you, you should always look better. Um, but having said that, yeah, I mean, I you know for my blogs things like that, most people do. I use I look for stock images. But I also try and change it up a bit. Um, you know, I either might add a filter to it, I might add text onto it, I might add logos, I might add whatever. But I do try and change it up um, just to make it a little bit more unique. But for a blog page itself, you know, it's it's not going to be an issue. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Um, okay. Right, let's um, move on to the next. This one from Cassie Richardson. It's titled, What Happens If I'm Not Focusing on Local Optimization? Cassie said, I'm working with a well known restaurant group. They have eight well-known restaurants and are trying to grow their catering side of the business. Everything is on one domain. Um, their uh, catering uh, slash events side of the business handles weddings, corporate events and other social brackets, non-profits, fundraising galas, etc. 
Some of their venues are their restaurants themselves, while others are off-site locations that exclusively use my client as the food caterer. So each venue is a res restaurant-group-name event venue and is marketed as such. They have shared with me that their focus will be on corporate and non-profit catering. Uh, BC, whatever that means. Um, they have a they have a wide range of venues that can fit almost any need. They want to focus on driving leads to their general catering form, uh, not marketing heavily on individual uh, venues themselves, so that they can then talk with the lead generated uh, and match them up um, with the uh, right venue option based on size, budget, interest, etc. Any general advice or tips? I don't want to focus too much on local optimization, off-site stuff, um, for the individual venues themselves, because that will get messy. So I'm optimizing for the entity of restaurant-group-name catering and events. There's not a specific location for that, obviously, but a solid landing page. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I was looking at this. <laughs> when when you look at what's what what someone's doing is they nine times out of ten and and i've been in this in, in in this kind of industry both in the real world and from a marketing point of view nine times out of ten um the user looks for the venue first it's my wedding anniversary it's this it's i'm having a corporate event blah 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 the boss has told me to find a venue the boss never says, go and find me a caterer first. And then once you found a caterer, then find a venue. It's the venue first. And that, that you need to, one suits the location, people getting there, how many people, uh, how many people will it seat? Um, you know, uh, where it's located, transportation, uh, accommodation near the venue. Okay. So it's the venue first, and then you look at what catering you can then include into it. Is it on-site, off-site? What, what do we want to do? Things like that. And then what caterer can or what serve that venue. So, you know, personally, I think you're missing a massive, massive thing there by not optimizing those uh, locations um, because the person searches the venue before they find a caterer. Uh, you, you don't go and find a caterer without a venue because I might look for a caterer and then I might find a venue and then this original caterer can't serve that venue. So if you see what I mean. Uh, so how would I structure something like this? Um, obviously, you're going to have a catering section. Within that catering section, I'm going to, you know, literally you need to provide the information. So uh one it's going to be what services do you provide to, to to what kind of clients right the venues so essentially you are actually going to be optimizing for local because you have to have the venues in there where they are how many they seat what kind of i mean you literally need to go down to what uh, how many can you seat in what different configurations um you know we can we can you know this can comfortably hold 100 people uh on six foot six foot tables 10 tempo table or we can do 120 if we do um banqueting style tables you know th things like this right so you need to provide this information on the venue uh because people again will depending on the information provided will shortlist venues right uh and you know because they want quotes they want to look at it etc so they shortlist things so if you don't provide the information about the venue, um, you, you just, you know, you're missing out on being shortlisted. <coughs> so the venues go into detail. Menus. Now, um, I know these are going to change. Uh, seasonality, and you know, depending on what you do, things like this. But I would essentially at least provide, um, you know, four or five examples. So whether we do a la carte, you know, uh, in, in a sense, so you know, uh, you could you could even 
break it down into seasons. So provide two different kind of menus, either, you know, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Um, do people want evening buffets or do they want a complete buffet, you know, buffet serving, uh, always a plated service. So provide different things. Um, do they want an evening, uh, an evening buffet? So whether it be a hog roast, you know, what can you do or what are your options, mini burgers or, or whatever the case may be. So provide, you know, a good, good enough range. And then of course you can say, look, everything's tailored to you, but here is an example of what we can do and what we have done in the past. And these are some ideas for you. Um, you know, you're welcome to come along. We do a tasting menu, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but provide that because this is what people want to see. They want to see, you know, too many places just don't even provide a single menu. They just say, you know, they just use that. Everything's, you know, everything's decided by you. Yeah, well, sorry, that's not going to cut it. People want to see stuff. Um, so your your venues, a lot of information on each venue. Of course, optimize it for local. And, and I really think, you know, if you don't, you're going to miss out a trick. Um, so pull in your pages, pull in the, you know, the eight restaurants, pull in, pull in all the venues, where they are, where they're located. Uh, if it's not your venue, at least embed their, their map into it, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, so menus, catering, uh, the venue and yeah. So look, I mean, that, 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 that's how I would do it is, you know, into this and then, but break it down into sections. But, um, if you, I really think you need to spend a lot of effort on the venue side of things because people don't look for a menu before a venue. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, if your bosses think otherwise, then uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, I mean, if they're in this industry, they must realize that people uh, think, well, what do I fancy? And then they look online and go, yeah, well, you know, I like the menu and I'm going to book there because I like the look of the menu, not because. And not because of where it is. You think of what you want to eat, and then you pick pick the restaurant in that sense. Um, so it's it's the venue before the menu. Um, and I think you need to get into your boss's head, and I think you need to optimize for it. Good one, Tim. All right. Does anyone want to add anything to this before we move on? Okay, let's uh, go to the next. This one from Lauren Baker. Um, Lauren said, uh, it's, it's titled Canonical to a PDF file. Lauren said, hi, everyone. Extremely dumb SEO question here. Uh, contributed a client's article to a traditional magazine, which only has a, a PDF for their online version. I uh, would like to also publish that content on the uh, client's blog. Normally, I would canonical back to the HTML place where we guest posted it, but it's a PDF that, that is indexed. Should I? A, canonical to a PDF file. B, self-refer and don't worry about the PDF and then see how Google treats it and possibly change the canonical if the magazine ends up launching a web version or C, something entirely different. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so look, um, You know what? I would probably just uh, I would I wouldn't uh, I would pr provide a decent introduction to the article. I would provide snippets from the article. I wouldn't just copy and paste it and chuck it on your site, you know, uh, because why are you doing that? You know, you know, it's been published. Um, uh, I provide an introduction to it. You can take snippets and sections from it and then reference uh, the, the PDF uh, or at least provide an introduction to it. And then if you wanted to copy and paste the whole thing, which is a little bit weird, um, um, then, then, then at least do that and then, you know, reference the PDF. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't publish that article that was written elsewhere. I just, I, I just wouldn't do it. I'd be like, you know, I'd be not from the sense of why I wouldn't do it. I'd be from the sense of, hey guys, you know, we did this article for it. Have you seen it? You know, what did you think of it? Um, this is what we what we felt was um, this is what we felt was um, you know and it, 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 this is why we wrote it this is what we felt um, have you got any comments on it you know depending on what the article was about can we do a little poll etc cetera, etc cetera. I would create something within that to then obviously one you're referencing that article people can go and read the whole fully the full thing there which is after what, after all, why you wrote it, you know, you, you give back, etc. But uh, and then reference to it. But I would, I would, I would try and use that to create another equally valuable page for your site around that, rather than copy and paste, bomb, worrying about canonicals, this and that. It, it, create something that's of equal value, but that complements that. Anyway. That's just my thought. I, yeah. Yeah, I agree with Tim. Um, one thing you have to think about is whether you can reproduce the article or none of the site. I mean, if something's been accepted by a magazine, then the magazine holds that intellectual property rights. So you can't just simply reproduce it on another site, even though you might have written that piece. So that's one issue that you have to be aware of. And yeah, why duplicate things? If you are the author and you can give more insight perhaps into the article, why have you written this article? What other things have you left out from that article that might help understand that article or place that article in context? There are many things that you can do with that piece of, um, with that piece of text and I think just simply reproducing it on another format at another place isn't the right way to go. Yeah, yeah, um, totally. I mean, I completely forgot about that. Um, recently, actually, one of one of um, my clients got contact. They've got that, that crappy press page that the sites have, which is, <laughs> winds me right up. Crappy thing which then they take an image of the article in the article and then there's just literally an image on the thing, you know. And they were recently contacted uh, by two. There was Cosmo, uh, there was Cosmo, um, there was a, um, uh, and, and, and another travel uh, article, um, a magazine. And they were, re because when they had done it, they had literally taken also, because it was the, the, the copy of the, the, picture of the, the article itself in the magazine and that. And then they had taken the logo and used the logo on the bottom of it. And they were actually quite contacted and said, you don't have permission to use our logo. Yeah, sure, you know, take a picture of the article. Fair dues, but don't copy our freaking logo and chuck it on there even, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, very, very important point that, that Masataki has uh, come up with there. And yet, and yet, whilst I agree with all that, um, in terms of user experience, wouldn't it be a lot better to have the HTML copy sitting on the page that you're reading rather than go over somewhere else and try and get uh, a PDF picture, a PDF representation of a magazine to fit onto your um, your, your phone screen, your laptop screen or something, and you end up, going you end up going shuffling sideways and up and down to try and read the damn thing because it's been it's been laid out for for paper for print so you know i i i wonder i wonder if there's not a case for uh for doing it as html uh in um if you've got permission to do it yeah well in that case put it in an accordion google says they read what uh <laughs> Google says they read what's in an accordion, but we all know from testing that it doesn't. <laughs> so chuck it in an accordion. Yeah, it, it might be a commercial decision by the magazine not to have an HTML um, 
version of the page. So it, it seems a bit weird to put it in the PDF online um, because um, if you have content online, then that might prevent the print sales. I mean, there are still magazines that do make money from, um, you know, printed versions, and they are protective of that. They know that they they make sufficient money from the print version that they don't want to get into into the digital because they know that then users would go to digital, and that loss won't be you know, um, the loss of paper subscriptions won't be compensated by the increased digital readership. Fair enough, Mr. Taki. Look, before we move on, I just want to point out uh, Barry Schwartz uh, uh, offered an option uh, C uh, um, to 404. But uh, the, the reason I wanted to point that out is because uh, uh, Barry uh, just uh, was uh, uh, accorded the title of uh, the, the US Search Personality of the Year. Um, and I, I think it, it, it's. Uh, uh, a great thing, uh, Barry has the um, the work ethic of ten men. He 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 just spends day and night to covering our industry. Um, he is um, um, an ambassador, if you like, uh, for our industry, and uh, glad to see that uh, his uh, uh, work has been acknowledged. Can't wait for Tim Kappa to be search personality of uh, the year. I mean, yeah, have to wait for a Red Square publication, maybe. I don't know. I think we're still searching for his personality, actually. <laughs> All right, let's um, move on to the next. Right, this one from Hossam Aid um, asks a simple question, subdomain or subfolder? It's not a question we've been asked before many times, but it's, I think it's always good to, to, to rehash these uh, questions because sometimes uh, nuance will creep in. Either or both. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> whichever you like, I suppose. Um, I just I I side on on more the subfolder. Yeah, I think I would say if everything is equal, then I would choose subfolder. Yeah. And it's been and the thing is, it's also not just um, uh, it's not just a pure SEO side, but also an analytics and um, uh, like kind of tracking. It's a little bit more. It's makes life a bit easier um both from it just kind of the development of your tracking to you don't have to set up a separate thing for your your search console um the more subdomains the more you got to put everything together in your search console uh, all that traffic then can't be integrated into your google analytics in the same account um so there's a lot of complications that outside of a pure SEO approach that can come up um, from using a subdomain, which is why usually uh, where possible, if you're able to keep it within the subfolder, it's a bit more ideal, I would say. Yeah. The only reason why I used to use subdomains um, was that keep the two language versions separate from one another so that uh, you know, each could have its own social media profiles, for example. And if you have a subfolder, then you can verify can you don't necessarily be, you, know, you can't necessarily associate a social media profile with um, a subfolder, whereas you can with subdomain, for example. Um, so that was the reason why I used to have two, I used to use well, three um, subdomains. But then um, when I moved over to HTTPS, I was a cheapskate, so I only wanted to buy a single domain. <laughs> certificate <laughs> with everything in subfolder and I've been sticking with subfolders since then. Okay. I anybody else? Just like to point out that Michael Stricker and Dave Elliott uh, 
for their contributions this week. Yeah, much appreciated. All right, I think this will be, yes, it's that time again. We missed some questions this week. I don't know how that happened, um, but we'll endeavour to uh, add them uh, on to next week's uh, um, episode. Um, we'll be back at the same time uh, next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it, it's um, good night. Uh, we thank you for your interest uh, um, in what we do. Um, uh, your interest makes uh, what we do worthwhile, and for that we are truly grateful. Okay. Um,